Tonight's program is sponsored by Exter. Keep watching to see how you can save 15% on your next luxury smart wallet. YouTube horror is an ever-evolving place, with new projects always boiling up to the front page of the site. One that has constantly been suggested to me in the comment section and also through the algorithm was a channel called The Mandela Catalog. While I was busy with recent projects, those unique thumbnails never left my feed on YouTube's homepage. Now caught up with everything else, I found time to explore this series that recently became so popular. So tonight, let's take a look into this series and the strange twists and turns within it. There are several videos in the Mandela catalog, with the most recent being posted a couple weeks ago at the beginning of January. Normally I would like to give a short introduction for what the Mandela catalog is, but honestly, I'm not too sure how I would even do so with this topic. The best way for me to describe it is like anxiety in audio and video form, and it's too difficult to talk about a narrative without just showing you the content. And as always, this is not my content, so I ask you to please go watch the Mandela Catalog for yourself before continuing this video. But before we get started, remember to like this video and subscribe to stay up to date with the latest content. And if you want to support the show, then why not join our Patreon and get your name in the show credits? With that, let's begin. Our first tape in the Mandela catalog is titled Overthrown, and begins with a creepy 90s Bible cartoon. Despite the innocent religious story, some things in this tape seem... off. Tonight, your savior was born in David's town. He is Christ, the Lord. You will find him wrapped in swaddle cloth and lying in a manger. Hello, 
was a woman named Mary, who lived in the city of Desiris. She was in love with a man named Joseph. Mary was young and never did, but she got a very special message from a man named Gildan. I am the, the Angel Gabriel. I've come to bring good news. News? For me? Whatever God wants, I will do. We'll pause for one second, because our cartoon is trying to tell the story of the birth of Jesus Christ. However, it seems our story is far more different than the Bible's version. The angel who visits Mary is definitely not named Gabriel, especially when looking at closed captions. Not to mention the message for Mary seems to be more like a secret code for a cult. The audio is being whispered backwards and with closed captions on, we are given the classic binary code cipher, but we'll decode all that at the end of the video. I will fool the shepherds. I will know their greatest fear. I will know your greatest fear. Wake up, Joseph. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. So this angel or group of angels are definitely not the ones we are used to, if they are angels at all. They are lying to Mary and Joseph and the shepherds. You guys didn't see it, but in the blank screen with the raspy breath, the closed caption showed someone having an entire conversation with himself. The captions read, How frozen I became and powerless then. Ask it not, reader, for I write it not, because all language would be insufficient. I did not die, and I alive remained not. Think for thyself now. Hast thou aught of wit, what I became, being of both deprived? Are these really angels? Because I'm getting an Iris vibe like in Gemini Home Entertainment, especially with this angel coming from the night sky. 
So after our first video, I think this Bible story is meant to be a sort of history lesson for the world this series is in. In this world, something came to earth and told us humans it was the Son of God. Whatever this entity is, it has a power to influence us however it wants. And based on the text in the closed captions, and the text that popped up at the end of the video, I believe this entity is later lamenting the fact it's stuck on earth for some reason, reaching to a point that this powerful entity is itself begging God for help. But what were in the codes earlier in the video? Let's start with the backwards audio. This is what it sounded like. I am the, a the angel Gabriel. I've come to bring good news. News? For me? Whatever God wants, no not perfect, no. Well, that's a shit piece of audio, alright. From what I can tell, it seems to be a comment from the video's creator thanking some YouTube channel. So unless something in a later video directly references this, we can move on. Now the binary code is a lot more interesting. After running it through a translator, the secret code in the captions reads, I am the one true savior. I must reverse the delusion. Joseph is next. Which we saw with this nefarious angel staring at Joseph through the window, thus continuing the idea that something not human has taken the identity of the Son of God and fool us humans into following it. There are just a couple more things I wanted to mention as well. First, the song that was sung in the video was a classic Sunday school song that even I remember singing as a kid. However, the lyrics we hear are wrong. The normal lyrics are, This I know, for the Bible tells me so. But in this video, the word for is censored, turning the lyrics to, This I know, the Bible tells me so. Again, making it seem that our angel is forcing the humans to follow it. Next, at the very beginning, we were shown what I think is the precise moment when this entity arrived to Earth, which brings me to my last observation, the video's title. It's called Overthrown, and after all these clues, something not from Earth has overthrown the coming of Jesus Christ, and has turned all the humans into followers of it. Our next video moves on to something a little bit more simple, and it's titled The Think Principle. This video starts up like other tapes, but instead of a cartoon, this one looks to be produced by a government agency called the United States Department of Temporal Phenomena, and was created in 1981. Along with the name and the clock design of the logo, it also includes a Latin phrase, Tempus Fugit. When translated to English, this means time flies. So this government agency seems to be in charge of disturbances in time itself and we have found a tape of theirs. Let's see what it has to say. We'll refer to as alternates. Until we have a complete understanding of the threat, it's important to stay home, lock all doors and windows, and have access to a loaded firearm or any ranged weapon at all times. You will know if an alternate exists solely based on their physical characteristics. If you see another person that looks identical to you, run away and hide. If you see a person that has a biologically impossible characteristic, run away and hide. If one manages to break into your home, refrain from any kind of communication or contact with the threat. These intelligent life forms utilize elements of psychological warfare to take advantage of their victims. While we heavily discourage any form of contact or communication with an alternate, we make exceptions for attempts at executing them yourself. So the government seems to have produced this tape to give to the people in order to spot and kill these time anomalies called alternates. And based on the description of these creatures, we may have already met one in the previous video. After all, what human wouldn't do what an angel said? 
Our video then cuts and we hear someone put in a new tape. Let's take a look. So now we have all the steps we need to deal with these alternates, but that last step, that didn't seem right. Not enough room for the two of us? Not to mention in this tape, the video also tells us to neutralize the alternate, unlike the last tape which said to kill one. I'm starting to think this second tape isn't a government made one like before. Let's keep moving forward. So that was a lot to unpack, so let's try to take it step by step. At the end of this video, we are shown the different types of alternates that people should look out for. Doppelgangers are pretty understandable, but for detectable ones, we are shown Gabriel again, and it seems like he has taken over the rest of our video. We then get the third type, which is Untitled, which I will title the What the Fuck Alternates, which explains itself. But the interesting part is the ending. We are now in the point of view of a real life person in their room who encounters one of these alternates before the video ends. Is this going to be like the FNAF VHS tapes where we are watching these tapes through the eyes of a character in the series' universe? Let's move on to our next video which is simply titled The Name of the Series, Mandela Catalog Volume 1 and it's a combination of the video we have just watched with some newer segments. So I'm going to skip past what we already watched and get straight to the new parts. We'll start where we hear a new tape get put in, and we are introduced to the recording of two friends. Let's watch. Hey, it's Caesar. I hope it's not too late. No, it's fine. Don't worry. What's up? Are you all right? Yeah, it's not me, it's my mom. She's knocked out cold and I have no idea why. I'm on my way to the ER, but could you do me a favor? Yeah, of course. What is it? Uh, I just need you to come over and turn on the cameras we have set up. You know the ones that we installed after we were robbed? Oh, yeah. Would you mind if I asked why? Well, she screamed really loud right before I found her on the ground. I, I just... Well, do you have your doors and windows locked? Like what the broadcast told us to do? Yeah, that's the weird part. Maybe she saw something? I don't, I don't know. Alright, I mean, it shouldn't be too bad. I'm just gonna switch them on and get out of there though. You know how I feel about your house. Yeah, that's fine. 
One last thing. Try to get a good view of it. Okay. All right, I gotta go. I almost at the hospital. Thank you. So Mark is going to go over to Caesar's house since he took his mother to the hospital. But that distortion we saw during their phone call tells us this isn't what's happening. I'm betting that it's an alternate of Mark's friend that is luring him over to the house. But if that's what's happening, what did the alternate do with Caesar and his mother? Let's continue. Looks like Mark was able to turn on the cameras at his friend's house and made it back home. 
only to find that whatever monster that attacked Caesar's mother followed him. But remember their conversation before. They mentioned a broadcast and how they were to follow certain rules. Could that broadcast be the one we saw in the last video? Mark sounds like he knows what's coming after him in his home. He knows it's an alternate. And it looks like the alternate was able to manipulate Mark into shooting himself instead of it. Was the alternate posing as Caesar? Or maybe the robber that broke into Caesar's house never left? Let's keep watching. We hear a new tape get put in, and then we get a warning as it begins to play, saying, Viewing of the following footage is illegal and punishable by law if not previously cleared by your assistant. If you have access to this video and you are not part of local authority, please stop the video and discard of the tape immediately. So this is a tape that was created for the local police, and I'm willing to bet that it's in the same town as Mark and Caesar. We learn the name of the county these events are taking in, Mandela County. And it looks like we are going to do some training for their police force. While at the station, a situation may occur where the local 911 dispatchers run out of operators to handle calls, so they are given to us instead. There are three, and only three, scenarios that you will handle with a caller. When a caller needs the police, send available personnel to the address. When the caller has a fire-related emergency, contact our neighboring fire department with the address and a brief description of the event. When the caller has a medical emergency, immediately contact the Mandela Community Hospital. Here at the Mandela County Police Department, we thank you for viewing this instruction. Nothing is worth the risk, nothing is worth the risk, nothing is worth the risk. Let's pause again. That's why Mark said that nobody came. The emergency responders are being trained by a tape that says to ignore alternate encounters. I guess that leaves the big question. Did an alternate alter this tape to manipulate law enforcement? Or worse, does the government just not care about these time monsters attacking the people of Mandela County? Let's move on to the last tape.
What the hell was that? Let's start with the first half of this tape. It seems to be some kind of psychology test parents can give to their children in order to see how they react to certain sounds. So Mandela County is already programming their children to respond to certain noises. But in the second half, we are shown a little kid's school project. But the kid is Mark. Remember that these alternates are time phenomenons. So has the alternate that killed Mark in the present went back in time to haunt him when he was only four? Or has it always been watching him? I'll be honest, the ability to manipulate time is really going to start fucking with any kind of timeline we can put together for this series. And at the end, we finally face the alternate that has been stalking Mark. So this video has fleshed out this world we've been introduced to. We are a citizen living in Mandela County, and it seems the government has warned the town's people about the alternate monsters who prey and manipulate everyone to serve their needs. We were also shown two boys who live in Mandela County, and while Mark is killed by an alternate, we still don't know the fate of Caesar. And we also were shown the control of time these alternates have, as well as their manipulation of technology through the tapes. And all of this is only the halfway point for the series. Let's keep moving and see our next video called Intruder Alert, and it begins with an interesting message. Then our new tape brings up the title called Keep an Eye on Your Children, another safety tape produced for Mandela County. A narrator for the video gives us, the viewers, some safety tips for protecting young children, like playing with toys, going on walks, and watching cartoons. But our video's TV seems to have an ominous message. Working is essential. They must receive attention from us so that they know we love them too. Some of us may rely on key things that keep them entertained, like toys, walks in a stroller, or even cartoons on the family television. Be cautious with what channels your children view on the television, since you never know what harmful content they may be seeing. Your children may be viewing elements of violent content, sexual content, graphic content, scary imagery. If you hear your child screaming or crying in front of the television, wait until your child stops making noise before entering the room. You will be so is this video really made by humans, or is this another manipulation by an alternate? That face did look way too happy to be looking at a young child after all. Our video actually just gave us a useful tip to keep us safe. They exist on different spectrums. Since alternates aren't running YouTube channels, then there is only one spectrum they can be on. Light. The electromagnetic spectrum. But let's keep moving before we try to tackle this concept. Our video now tells us to not enter our children's room until the crying has stopped. However, the mother figure has done so anyway. When she looks at the crib, her baby is gone, but we get a real-life photo of the empty bed. Then the mother looks at the TV, which was left on for the child, where she sees this. We saw this man before, and you know what, I'm not even going to call this a man. We saw this alternate earlier in the video, but now he's smiling, because he just got what he was after, the young child. And because of this, we watched the mother take her own life from grief, and I just wanted to point out that although the flipping on the lights and changing the imagery is a perfect idea, I just don't like that it's just clip art images dropped into the frame. We then are flashed the phrase, distraught at the sight of her missing infant, in a similar style that we've seen in Walton Files, layered over the screen. Our video then cuts to another emergency broadcast. We are then told that over 3,000 children have gone missing in several counties, including the one that Caesar and Mark was in. We are then told again to keep our children away from the TVs, and our broadcast ends with a message saying that the video was made by the police at Mandela County.
before switching to a slideshow of images an investigator took when surveying a home with noise complaints. The first image is our investigator walking up to the primary victim's home, which is followed by the investigator saying he felt an overwhelming sense of dread before leaving the scene. Since that investigator pussied out, another officer went and sat up cameras to take photos every five minutes of the room the occurrence happened in. The first two photos are pretty normal, but the third is where things get a little more frightening. So whatever this intruder is took the body of the woman who hanged herself. However, our slideshow ends with police saying that they are ruling out this suspect as an alternate. Well, considering that this man was in our TV, stole a child, and emerged into corporeal form to move the woman's body, we can bet they're probably wrong. We are then told that a Lieutenant Davis of the police force has restricted the images from being released to the public. Again, we saw this earlier. The government does not want the public to find out about the alternates. And just like in Monument Mythos, this creates two theories. Either the government doesn't want the knowledge to come out because they fear it will create a town-wide panic, or the government is in league with these alternates. After all, there is a division of the federal government specifically created to deal with them. With that, our video ends, but before we start the next one, let's talk about the spectrum rule this series just gave us. If alternates exist on different electromagnetic spectrums, then one getting through the TV isn't a shock since the TV is producing a separate set of light waves. But perhaps it also explains how our videos are being corrupted by the alternates like before. They can manipulate the tapes by literally entering them and changing what the viewer sees. So we must be extra careful in future videos to not be tricked by some manipulation. Our next video is titled Metaphysical Awareness Disorder and is a medical tape to tell us what happens to humans when they gaze upon an alternate. The video is barely two minutes long, so I'll just highlight some key parts. First, the video heavily implies that the mother from earlier hanged herself not out of grief, but because she saw the alternate face to face, which we know she did before she took her own life. Also, the end of our video warns us to keep our eyes shut if we think an alternate is close to us, which we know Mark failed to do because we saw what he saw. The entity in his room before he took his own life, but now we know it was because he suffered from MAD. Long story short, don't look at the alternates or there is a 97% chance you kill yourself. Our next video is titled Exhibition, which is a great name because in this video we are going to see an exhibit of habits Mark had before the event we saw earlier in his room. But before all that, we're back to the Creepies 90s Bible cartoons, this time with Noah and the Ark as the focus. In the cartoon, Noah's attention would originally be caught by God's voice, but in this video, it is the banging on the door which we heard before Mark died, implying the alternate is the one speaking to Noah. But our video cuts away before anything is said. Then we get a photo of two children in front of an old church. In our last video, medical professionals said to stay away from religious practices because the alternates are attached to them. So a great old church is definitely the worst place for us to be. But our video cuts back to the police force when we learn that Mark had been recording all of his moments before the event in his room, and these recordings were saved by Lieutenant Davis.
When these recordings are shown to us, we take the point of view of Mark as he sits in his room panicking at nothing before driving to the church we saw earlier. There he films as if he was certain he would catch something in or on the church, but doesn't. It isn't until he turns on his TV that his suspicion is justified, when another new alternate appears behind the glass. Then another alternate appears by the window of his home. Lieutenant Davis in his report says that Mark was clearly paranoid before the night of his attack, and based on the drawing he made when he was a kid, he's been paranoid for a long time. Our video then cuts back to the story of Noah where we get this very important dialogue exchange that I would rather you have watched for yourself. Our video's final moments show us the seal for Department of Temporal Phenomena again, but at first it says the death of Mark Heathcliff before correcting itself. The series gets a little meta as we are told that prolonged exposure to analog TV could affect us, which I have no idea what that could mean. Damn it, Clyde.
why he doesn't know anything about Richard. What now? But our last message from the government tells us that an order was given for the people to destroy their TVs and mirrors, which we can assume means the government is on our side against these alternates. Before we jump into our last video, I just want to try and establish our timeline, because the next video will take place further in the future. Everything in Mark's story took place in 1992, and I guess the idea for the series is that this was like the first season of the Mandela Catalog. So this next video starts season 2, and like I said, we are going to jump 17 years into the future to winter break of 2009. So are the alternates still a threat to Mandela County? Let's find out. Our video starts with an FBI wanted poster for two boys named Adam Murray and Jonah Marshall and that they are associated with the Bythorn Paranormal Society, which if we remember, is another county near Mandela that is being affected by the alternates. We are also quickly shown that they are victims 3 and 4. We then hear a phone call between Adam and a potential customer for the Paranormal Society. Let's take a listen. You've reached the Bythorn Paranormal Society, how may I help you? Hello? Uh, may I schedule an appointment? Of course, ma'am. Where's the location? My home. One. Okay, thank you. Would you mind giving me a brief description of what you've been experiencing? I've been hearing things. Like what, ma'am? I still hear the meows of my old cat Johnny, but the little guy passed away a few years ago. <sighs> really? A freaking cat alternate? Shh. I don't think it's an alternate. I just think his soul roams the house still. I want to make sure he finds peace in whatever realm he resides in. Do you think you could help guide him? We can certainly try, ma'am. When would you like us to visit? As soon as possible, please. When's your next opening? Well, we could do tonight if you want. Can you do three nights? I'm away from home on a business trip. I'm sure this will give you enough time to deal with him. Uh, well... How about 500 a night? Oh, hell yeah! Alright. Sounds like a plan. Uh, we will help your cat, ma'am. Thank you so much. I appreciate it more than you can think. No problem, ma'am. It's just what we do. Alright, let's pause for a moment. So, alternates are definitely still a thing in the world. However, these are kids, and Adam sounds so nonchalant about them. Perhaps they have become local legend in the almost two decades since Mark Heathcliff's death. But let's be honest, we can bet that this woman isn't real and is probably a doppelganger luring these two to an alternate's house. But for $500 a night, who wouldn't pass up that offer? You got it? Yeah, just open the trunk. Now, are you really sure you got it? Cause I can just open the damn trunk, Jonah. Hmm. Guess you do know. <laughs> Think you got anything we actually needed? Oh. Not like we can do anything about it now. Shit. You got anything left? Uh. You used everything already? Damn it! Well, we don't gotta worry about income anymore, since we got this massive freaking payday, right? Uh, well, we've got a couple options. Which are? We either, one, ask someone to help start our car with the cables, or... Do you want another one? Yeah. Uh, it's broad daylight now, but it's night and we can't call the cops yet. Right. And we'd be doing yet another delinquent act, but it's not like we aren't already underrun anyway. 
Let's pause again. So as well as paranormal investigators, Adam and Jonah are car thieves and even consider stealing another car rather than just asking for a jump start. Which like, why? Even from a criminal standpoint, that's dumb. Anyway, let's continue. In our slideshow, we see the boys fixing the car, and then the sign saying the boys have entered Mandela County, before cutting back to some video from inside their car. And who's to say that she's not even crazy? Who's to say she's not as high as I'm going to be in 30 minutes? Uh, I would hope us, because the last thing I need is getting a weird house call from a stoned lady about a dead cat, and then there'd be nothing, nothing, no, nothing, no, 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 no. Right? Half of me thinks that there aren't even alternates, and the mayor was just too stupid to just make that entire uh, infographic. Yeah, but then, like, why are we getting, getting so many calls by alternates in the first place? Yeah, maybe because every, maybe it's mass hysteria. Right? Do you think this is the rise of the war on alternates? I don't know. I'm, we're just two guys driving. The boys joked about the woman probably making things up until we get this green ultra key background flashing on the screen. Just out of curiosity, I tried seeing if these held any secret messages, but unfortunately all I pulled was this distortion. That is definitely not part of their car. But this is as clear as I can make it and it's not enough to figure out what it could be. But let me know in the comments if someone with better skills than I could figure out the puzzle. The dialogue continues with Jonah saying he doesn't think alternates are even real and that the mayor's infographics, which are probably similar to the ones we have seen, aren't real. But Adam reminds him that they are getting calls from customers asking about alternates. Our video cuts to dashcam footage of the boys somewhere out in the country driving closer to the house. We get from the dialogue that the GPS device wasn't outlawed, referencing the guy's face we saw in previous videos who used TVs to appear. The boys pull up to their customer's house, and the first night begins on January 12, 2009 at 11.45 p.m. One of the boys discover a 90s home camera setup already in the house, which is similar to the camera Caesar's mom set up in their home, so maybe this is the same house. Let's keep investigating. There's one camera in there already, but it's one of those old ones with the tapes and stuff. It will record, but I won't be able to see it in real time. I'll just have to look at it afterwards. Here, kitty, kitty. Everything okay? Are you at peace here? You look so stupid right now. Dude, what am I supposed to do for a literal ghost cat? What's what's it going to do? Just uh, us to death? Like, what are we doing here? Would you mind taking this seriously for once? I mean, in the end, I don't really have to take that much seriously at all. Because I'm in here, and you're in there, and you're... Yeah, because you were too scared to go inside to begin with. Not too scared. I'm not too scared. Yes, you scared. are. No, I'm not. I'm not scared. I'm not. I'm not. I just... I'm allergic to that. You seeing this? Uh... You are. It's locked tight. That's kind of weird. 
trying to um, do you have anything to you know tear it down I'm not gonna bust down this random lady's door it's fine she's not gonna find out anyways moving on are you uh the boys look over the footage they caught and don't find anything except for the faint scream at the very end before our video cuts. And they mentioned a locked door, which they guess what it might lead to. Yeah, I'm not... I'm scrolling through this, I don't think I see anything either. I mean, who knows? <laughs> Maybe that thing's just locked downstairs. Yeah, the more... I'm not gonna lie to you, man. The more I look at this house, the more I... The more I really don't want to be in that. I mean, I don't see anything. I think we're just kind of babysitting an empty house for three nights. I mean, I think the best thing that can happen is we just leave now and then we stay we were here the entire time. Because I'm, I'm looking at this house and I'm looking at this footage, and even though there's nothing too threatening about it, I don't, I don't like it. I really don't like it. It's literally just an empty house, bro. Can you suck it up for three nights? <sighs> Fuck what? The boys must have heard that scream because Adam wants to go back in while Jonah asks him to stay in the car. But with the cut to night two, we know Adam went in anyway. This is kind of interesting. I don't, I don't, don't, don't think you should go in there now. I'm going back in. There's, there's something deeper than a cat here. I think that's the problem. I, I think it's fine. You're over. Realize what this could do for us? Who what for us? We're already on the run. We don't need this attention again. Yeah, yeah. Do you like it or not? I'm going back in. Adam, please. It's too late. I've already made up my mind. We are also told that filming the causes in the house will cause video and audio distortion on their equipment. How did you die? Where are you from? What year were you born in? Are you lost? Am I coming through? Not and clear. Oh my god, behind you! Shut up! Adam thinks Jonah is playing a prank on him until the audio begins to loop and we get a cut of the wanted poster upside down on the screen for a moment. Oh my god, behind you! Dude, cut it out! Oh my god, behind you! Dude, seriously, stop! Oh my god, behind you! Behind you! Behind you! Dude, fucking quit! What the hell did I do? Just forget We get another green screen distortion until something starts uh, talking to Jonah in the car. Exactly? And this happens. Dude, Dude, that's not funny. funny. What's not funny? Let's take a tiny bite. God's probably not even looking. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I don't know. It was good, but suddenly I feel kind of scared. Let's pause again before Adam goes to bed in the house. We are shown another Bible cartoon clip, but this time of Adam in the Garden of Eden. Clearly this series is playing with the names of characters as Adam in the cartoon says he's scared after biting into the apple, perhaps reflecting what our Adam actually feels inside the house. But if that's the case, then maybe the devil in the Bible story is our alternate angel we've seen in the other cartoons interacting with the characters. I lost visuals on cam 3. You think you could check that out?
Let's pause right there. So something has entered the house with Adam and has made its presence known to one of the cameras. This horrifying figure must be another alternate, but it says something very quickly. But after slowing it down and reversing it, it's still incomprehensible. However, the closed captions on the video does tell us something. Patients report multiple sleepless nights after their symptoms initially become apparent. It is not so difficult to avoid, however. The patient must actively try to seek it out. Although sounding like it came from the MAD PSA tape, this sounds like some more manipulation by this alternate to get a victim to come to it. Let's keep moving. We are shown image 333 of nothing and the description being all question marks. Then image 142 reads, Adam, why don't you come back to the car after you tried talking to it? Image 143 says, Don't act like you don't stare at these stupid pictures all day. I know you are reading this. Image 144 then has Jonah say, Look man, I'm hungry. I don't want to leave without you. I'm kinda worried. Image 155 says, I don't know what you are so busy doing in there. Just come out to the car and let's go get a pizza, then back home. Please. In image 146, Adam found that the locked door is open and can hear the lady's cat downstairs. We get an image of a wall saying nothing is worth the risk and can hear the cat still meowing. Dude, I don't know what you want from me. I'm as serious now as I've ever been. <laughs> this whole time, huh? So you fucking with me? Were you being serious? I get that I screw around sometimes, okay? But that's just what I do. Well, maybe it shouldn't be. Look, man, I'm just devastated that I'm not as broken as you still are with everything that's happened, and I'm sorry that I can't keep helping you carry this burden. What does that have to do with anything? But I'm... Reaching my fucking limit here. These things have taken so much away from us, yet you still run to them every chance you get! No, I- don't. Fucking listen to me! You're not invincible, okay? I know you thought that when we started doing these fucking death marches, and nothing happened, and I get it, but this right here is real, and you should know that more than anybody! What's that even supposed to mean? I wish we never looked for your m because she is dead and gone, and we were never gonna get her back. What did you just fucking say to me? And I'm sorry that these are the lives that we lead today, but Adam, if you walk down those stairs, you'd be joining her. And if by some miracle you come back out, I don't think you'd be yourself. And I'm telling you right now that I won't be here to confirm that. Well then just fucking leave then! Leave! Let's pause again. So that whole argument gave us some insight to our characters. Adam has lost someone important to him to the alternates, and that's why he's been going after them. But Jonah didn't think they were real until now, and has threatened to leave Adam behind in the house. Let's see what happens. Adam discovers that the cat meowing was just a recording manipulated by the TV alternate that was stealing children in Season 1, before flashing all of the Mark Heathcliff events for Adam to see before distorting out of control. When Adam asks what the alternate is, all we hear is the transforming voice of the alternate,
Our video then cuts to their car driving away, but Jonah is being taunted by whatever was in the house. It tells him repeatedly to open his eyes, which we know from the MAD PSA is an instant death sentence, where our video finally ends with Jonah pulling over and getting out of his car. I guess it's kind of meant to be a cliffhanger unless it's already too late and the alternate got to him. And that's everything to the Mandela Catalog right now as I edit this video. Well, not everything. There is a teaser for Volume 2 that I skipped. It isn't much, but I'll mention its importance in our conclusions. So the Mandela Catalog is a series that spans almost 20 years. It takes place in its own world similar to our own. However, the ghosts that inhabit this small county of Mandela are far more complex than hauntings. In Season 1, we were shown the attack of Mark Heathcliff and its effects on the entire county with police warnings, government infographics, and the mental awareness PSA tapes, all of which are the humans trying to control and contain whatever the alternate phenomenon is. We have seen a few different forms of these alternates, but none have been as lethal as the man in the TV who we were told kidnapped over 3,000 kids back in 1992. A figure that still lurks around Mandela County to this day, manipulating victims to find him. With this TV and mirror destruction order happening, we can assume it has hindered the alternates all these years to 2009, where even the people are starting to question whether alternates were even real. In 2009, we have followed the story of paranormal investigators Adam and Jonah who have stumbled into the trap set by the man in the TV, where Adam, motivated by some traumatizing event, has come face to face with the alternate. However, his friend Jonah has tried to run, only to be stopped and removed from his vehicle. Considering what happened to Caesar, I'm betting we have not seen the end of Adam and Jonah, who are almost likely to become new alternates of the man in the TV. But what are the alternates and what is their goal? Well, we can't ignore the constant religious themes and imagery taking place throughout the series. We've seen Bible cartoons, been inside old churches, and even had subtle crosses thrown in our faces. So my theory is that these alternates are somehow connected to religious faith, perhaps even corrupting it, or it is the faith itself in the world of the Mandela Catalog. The angel Gabriel, the voice of God to Noah, the devil in the Garden of Eden, all being controlled by these alternates. And our characters so far have shared the same names of characters in the Bible. Mark, Jonah, Adam. Well, Caesar not as much, but there are already too many examples for me not to mention them. Which I think means we are seeing the alternates not want to kill humans, but turn them into religious followers. As the angel said, he is the one true savior, and all this time has been an alternate that wants control of us humans. If you want more proof of this religion idea or theory, look no further than the audio in the teaser for Volume 2, which says this in it. Loving God, I pray that you will comfort me in my suffering. Lend skill to the hands of my healers and bless the means used for my cure. Give me such confidence in the power of your grace, that even when I am afraid, I may put my whole trust in you, through our Savior. And that's the Mandela Catalog so far. As always, I will keep you up to date when more videos release in this series. 
Until then, I want to hear what you think about the Mandela catalog down in the comments below. And be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more content. But before we close, I'm proud to have this presentation sponsored by Exter. Are you interested in joining the minimalist wallet craze? And you love Pagan Valley Productions? Then this ad is meant for you. Exter is the world's largest smart wallet brand and has designed new solutions that improve how people carry all their essentials every day. As well as being super stylish, Exter wallets have an edge that no other wallet has. Afraid of losing your wallet? Exter has you covered with the tracker card that connects to your phone making it easy to find your wallet everywhere in the world. Afraid of thieves stealing your private information like credit card numbers? Exter has you covered. Afraid that a cabal of local elites are slowly closing in on your secret activities in your local theater and are paranoid that they are tracking your every move? Exter has you covered with their RFID protection, securing your wallet and your information from prying eyes. And here's my favorite part about Exter wallets. Let's say you're in a rush at your local store buying basic groceries, and while trying to make your purchase at the checkout, you pull out your small minimalist wallet. Then you're that guy in line, fumbling through all your cards to find the one you want to use. And when you're done, you're fumbling around to get your card squeezed back in with the others. Extra wallets have an amazing mechanism that, at a push of a button, presents all of your cards so you can easily grab which one you need. And when you're done, you simply push the cards back into the wallet and you're on your way. Exter is your next step into a more modern world with style, protection, and technology that has changed how people carry their daily essentials. And beginning February 28th until April 12th, Exter is celebrating their anniversary with a discount of up to 15% off your next luxury smart wallet. Using the link in the description will tell the good folks at Exter that Pagan Valley sent you, so why not support the show and upgrade your wallet today? With that, this has been Pagan Valley, and I wish you all a good evening.